Hi, my name is Heidi Mackey. I'm a registered dental hygienist and also a hypnotist in the state of California. And though we can't use hypnotism in the state of California, we can use many of the same techniques in the operatory or the dental office. And so today I'm going to go through a few of those things with you. And whether you are a patient or the hygienist, these tips and tricks can work for you. And the first thing is to go in with a light heart. And that means maybe look at a cat video before you're in the operatory. Or if you're a hygienist, share something funny just to bring that lightheartedness into the operatory. Breathing is major important during a hygiene appointment. If you work out, you know what this means. And if you're a yoga student, you know what this means. We use oxygen to bring in comfort into our bodies. Now, we know that sometimes dental hygiene appointments are a little less comfortable than we'd like them to be, but breathing can help us work through that. And doing a good, relaxed breathing can be most helpful. I like to use the four, two, four count. What that means is four counts in, hold it for two, let it out for four. Now, this gives us a wonderful moment of gas exchange in those two seconds in between. That means the oxygen can fully get it into our lungs, oxygenate our blood, bring it to all of our cells, and the carbon dioxide gets out of our cells and we expel it through the lungs. It's a great thing. If you pair this with putting your hands on the tummy, the hygienist can actually see the air going in and out and guide you if you should stop breathing. I found that many of my patients like to hold their breath, and this will cause more discomfort, not just in their mouth, but their whole body. But of course, we're mainly particularly concerned with that in the mouth during the dental hygiene appointment. Another way is power of the hand. All this means is it's a signal between you and the hygienist. Raising that hand gives you that moment to either stop, catch your breath, discuss what, what might be going on. And this is done occasionally where a patient needs to have just that little added support from the hygienist or maybe that momentary break. I find that when I give the power of the hand to my patient, it's usually used very rarely. And if it is used, it's momentary and it actually makes the appointment go much faster than slower. There's something called burst breathing that I like to use. Burst breathing is a great technique if there's a single area uh, where we need just a little added comfort and we're not using uh, the topical or anesthesia, or even if we are and we need just a little bit of extra distraction or comfort, this works great. We get to the area in question, we have the patient take a quick deep breath in, work that area, they exhale, and we can move on. Sometimes we need to do this once or twice, uh, but it's a great way to get through a tricky, more sensitive spot. Also, if our area that may be larger, the countdown. Now, there's a story of a swimmer that went from Los Angeles area to California, and she was trying to set a record. She was swimming and swam many, many hours, but the fog rolled in. She couldn't see the Catalina shoreline. She lost track of where it was, and she had no, no idea how much further she would have to go. So she gave up swimming and climbed back into her support boat only to find that she was almost to her goal. Had she gone for just a little bit more, she would have made the record. And as a result of not knowing where it is, she missed the mark. She did eventually complete that goal, made the record. However, we have the same situation as patients. We don't know how much longer the hygienist is going to be going through, maybe a little trickier area. But if we had the countdown, meaning the hygienist knowing how many more strokes she's going to be going or how many seconds she'll be going would be so much helpful for us as clients uh, or us as hygienists giving that to our clients, our patients. So as they start a tricky area, have them count down. Five, four, three, two, one, and then we stop. If there needs to be a repeat, we start again if needed. But this gives the patient that 
a knowledge of how much longer it's going to go. We can do anything for a short time, but if we have no idea how long it's going to go on, we want to give up, just like that swimmer on the way to, Cal to uh, Catalina. Great way for the hygienist to aid the, the patients in the comfort is to notice any areas of tension, whether that's the shoulder, the hands, gripping the armrest, tell them to relax that, as well as in the mouth. How many times have we gone in clenching the lips, tightening the cheeks? And it's so much easier for both patient and hygienist when a situation like that occurs to have the hygienist just tap the area, say, relax this. Sometimes our patients aren't even aware they're tensing up. Double touch, relax. The cheeks, relax. After doing that a few times, they'll automatically relax as a gentle touch is giving. Sometimes it does need to be repeated a few times, and that's okay. Gentle touch, congruently say, relax. As a patient relax, let them know that they did well. That's right, just like that. Hold on to that relaxation. Words we use in hypnosis all the time. This can work very well for the non-hypnosis that we use in the dental operatory and allow that patient to hold on to their relaxation. Noticing the patient and remarking on that, you did great, that's right. Words we use in hypnosis all the time. Let's the patient know that they are doing exactly what you need. We want to use the ABCs that we use in high uh, hypnosis all the time, and that is always be calibrating. We want to always be calibrating with our patient that they are relaxed, following what we need. So ABC, are they taking breaths with the, as we can see with their hands on their bellies? Are they relaxing as we tell them? Uh, always be calibrating them. Some patients will need a little more guidance than others, but this can be really helpful if we are actually paying attention to what the needs of our patients are. After we're all done with the hygiene appointment, it's great if a hygienist can tell the clients that you did great. If you are the patient, tell yourself, you did great. Next time it's going to be even easier. As you learn these techniques, practice these, implement these into your hygiene appointments, you'll be surprised how each time that you go in for your subsequent appointments, how much easier it truly gets. These are some non-hypnotic techniques that you can use in the dental operatory that are hypnosis-inspired. Thanks for now. We'll see you next time.